Hi guys, so today let's talk about basic wardrobe for all the body types. So today we're going to discuss pieces that are so universal, so it's going to be great for taller women, for smaller women, for wider women, for narrower women, for fleshy women or for bony women. I have a huge playlist on my channel, which is called Kibi Body Types. It is very interesting. I'm going to leave the link down below if you're interested. So there, if you determine what your body type is, it's one of 10. I have a separate video about basic wardrobe for autumn, for winter, for summer. It can be very interesting for you because we're discussing each piece from the viewpoint of your particular body. And today we're going to talk about the most universal pieces. People have different periods of their lives. Sometimes they tend for more classic pieces. Sometimes we want something crazy and I think that everything is great. Everything is acceptable. Listen to yourself and do what is right for you. There are many stylists out there. Some stylists base all their fashion philosophy on the basics. There are some stylists who don't like the basics. For them, it's the most boring thing that can ever happen. It's just basic wardrobe is helping us. I've seen women who got a new job. They just want to look more presentable and quite fast. I'm really loving basic wardrobe philosophy. I have tons of stuff that is very colorful, but I'm a musician, so I'm filming a lot of music videos and I'm filming a lot of videos here too. Sometimes I want something more interesting, more colorful, but if you've seen me in a regular life, I look very, very boring because my biggest accessory, I think, is my bleached hair. It normally is brightening everything else, whatever I wear. Rule number one, if we talk about basics, black color is very forgiving because black is absorbing light, is not reflecting light normally if it's matte. This is why so many people go for black things because even if it's cheap and has very thin fabric, even if it's wrinkled, even if it has folds or unwanted folds, we don't see these shadows because black itself is a color of a shadow. However, once we start going more light, this is when we have to think about silhouette even more and about fabric even more. I noticed that if I have lighter pieces in my wardrobe, they're normally more expensive. So many stylists say that basics have to be 70% of your wardrobe, something interesting 30%. I think mostly depends on what is your profession and even your body type, because I noticed that there are some women who are quite fleshy, very rounded. Even if they work in an office, they have a huge amount of dresses. They just look great with dresses, slightly relaxed dresses, dresses with waist, shorter dresses and longer dresses. So their wardrobe consists of a lot of different kinds of dresses and dresses in different colors, monochromatic or with prints. So for them, it's gonna be their basic capsule. And then they can just throw something on like a cardigan or something. They can change their shoes and their bag and they're good to go. Some women, they really like to go into that business category, blazers, jackets, something a little bit more sharp and slightly masculine. It's also great. And I know women who have that type of a body type on whom it all looks very effortless. They don't feel like if they're wearing a blazer, they are very, very dressed. And I know some women who have very soft figures. So when they're wearing blazer, they just feel like they've been trying so hard and it doesn't look effortless on them. And they still feel very stiff on that. And the best test for that, if you have no time to dress up, what is the first thing you grab from your wardrobe? You wear it and you go. What is that first thing? Just analyze it. What kind of piece is that? What kind of color it has? Where did you get it? Was it expensive or not very expensive? What is the silhouette? But analyzing that, so this is probably something that you are comfortable in. So you can go from there and build your basic wardrobe from there. So if it's an artist or a designer, they normally have 70% of very colorful or crazy pieces and 30% of basic pieces just to balance it out a little bit. So you see, it just depends on your lifestyle. I've watched tons of videos about basic wardrobe and of course for the last 10 or 15 years, almost nothing changed on YouTube. It's pretty much the same and it's probably gonna be the same for a long time. That's what I can predict. I can't imagine us having something too different. We'll see. Let's just see what they offer as basics and how I see it on different types of women. So first thing that everybody talks about is a blazer. Blazer can be double-breasted or single-breasted. If it's double-breasted, it's widening your top part and your torso quite much. So if you don't want to add any more width to your body, just don't go for double-breasted. Double-breasted normally looks great on women who are quite bony, tall and angular. So even if they combine it with wider pants, normally it's, it's gonna look nice. If you have a lot of flesh, 
Sometimes you really have to find a good blazer for yourself. First of all, don't buy something extremely small. Second of all, double-breasted might not look nice on you. If you have chest, you need to accommodate your curves somehow. So there are some blazers that go slightly closer to you, just to slightly accentuate the curve. And I'm not talking about plus size now. No, they're just women who have quite rounded body just in general. They have rounded chest, rounded hips. You can go for black, navy blue, camel, beige, or white. Sometimes it can be checked pattern. It's probably one of the most classic ones. Not stripes, checked. But this pattern should not be very contrasted and extremely bright or too large. It should be hardly visible with kind of thin lines then it's going to be more like a basic piece sometimes even if they go for work i know women who just go for cardigans kind of like knitted blazers because knitted blazer is a blazer that can easily go around your curves it can go with a belt so you can always have some waist emphasis under your chest it's going to look beautiful very presentable if you buy this in classic colors like camel black navy blue it should have nice buttons then it's going to keep its shape and is going to look very presentable and very business-like so probably for women with softer flesh that could be their type of blazers for their basic wardrobe and again black things or very dark navy blue things especially if they have matte fabric they're not reflecting light very much so you can get something cheaper get away with that the lighter the piece is, the more expensive it should be. You can see everything on the light fabric. Sometimes white fabric can be so cheap, so it wrinkles even after you ironed it because it's just not well made. If you look on the microscope, the threads are all over the place. They're not made correctly. They're not sitting with each other very well. If we talk about majority of the body types, pants are best when they have mid-rise and not high-rise. Some people say high-rise looks good on everyone. I don't agree with that. I think there are women who have quite short torso and elongated legs, and if they go for high-rise, they can really look like the pants are so close to their head and their head can look very large comparing to the torso that they made even shorter with these pants. So I don't recommend to go for that. Just go for regular mid-rise and low-rise. I don't even have to explain. It makes legs look shorter. It only looks not normal on women with extremely short torso and with extremely long legs. But even then, I think middle-rise would work perfectly. They should probably be straight and they should finish at the bottom of the thinnest part of your ankle or slightly below. If it's too short it already looks slightly like capri pants especially if you have elongated legs it might not look elegant enough especially for your work so that would be probably a perfect length if it's slightly thinner like a skinny pants it's nice for smaller women or for bonier women. This is why I think straight pants would fit to everyone. And it's interesting, if you're choosing beige pants, so many things depend on the color that you choose because they can look slightly untidy sometimes, especially if it's not very expensive fabric. It folds a lot and it looks wrinkled. And sometimes when it stretches, it looks so untidy if it's in beige color. So if you're choosing beige pants, first of all, the beige has to be fresh looking. The Beige should not have a lot of gray in it because grayish beige looks dirty. So you gotta choose fresh, clean, slightly camel, maybe beige pants with good quality material that keeps its shape, especially after you iron it. It's very hard to find good white pants, even if they are more expensive. Many white pants, they are see-through, but it's great to have white pants in your wardrobe because it's such an upgraded piece. It should not be skinny. It can be slightly on the wider side, but still, I think if we talk about the most universal pieces that you can't go wrong with that, it doesn't matter what body type you have, I think you just go for straight ones. It's just the fabric has to be so thick so it sits on you properly and you don't see all the underwear. Sometimes if you have pants with folds, here just check how the folds are looking some folds are quite big and they're made like that like on this picture and that sometimes can make your belly look very big especially if it's high-waisted because it normally sits very narrow on your waist and then it has all these folds so your belly looks very prominent so in this case just choose folds that are whether smaller or they are tucked in different direction so if they're tucked like that then on contour your belly is going to look a bit more flat and then maybe mid-rise would be better for this purpose now everybody talks about this white crisp shirt i agree with that it's a great piece. I can even wear it on top of this look and it's gonna look great. Some people with some coloration 
they can't pull off very very bleached white color it washes them out it overpowers them so for them probably off-white would be better and off-white meaning white with a little bit gray or yellow or both added to that and normally you can't tell unless you compare it to another white. Some stylists recommend to go for whitish blue or whitish pink shirt colors. In my opinion, almost everyone can go for whitish blue. Not everyone can go for whitish pink. So normally I notice that women with very warm coloration, yellowish skin, slightly olive skin, very warm hair, very warm eyes, they don't look good with that whitish pink, especially if it's cool, light color. It's not complementing their coloration. However, blue is more universal. But I'm not saying you should not choose your blue tone. Of course, everybody has their own blue tone for them. But I just noticed that blue is not that bad with yellowish skin, warm hair and eyes like pink. Now, there's one interesting piece that I want to talk to you about is beige shirt. Beige shirt that is close to your skin color or slightly fresher than your skin color. Maybe not darker, but slightly lighter, couple of tones. So what it can do for you, it can whether make you look very delicate, gentle, very creamy and minimalistic, or it can make you look very pale and sick. Of course, it should be in good quality, it should be ironed, then it will look very delicate and then you can add some accessories like pearl necklace or earrings it can look beautiful some women however they need a little bit more support maybe like a darker scarf just to add a little bit more contrast in there however it's an interesting piece the only thing here is again the color beige color can be so different sometimes it can be a lot of beige with gray again it can look slightly dirty and unfresh on you it can make your face look dull and matte slightly green sometimes but if it's a nice beige which is very fresh normally this beige doesn't have any gray in it and it's slightly creamy looking powdery looking that can look amazing also the silhouette of the shirt should be certain many women talk about men style shirt which is great yes but it normally again looks amazing on women with more angular bodies women with more soft bodies more rounded bodies sometimes they might feel like they need a, something a little bit more blousy looking not as severe shirt at least and shirts that are very cropped very small especially shirts with cropped sleeves it's not gonna work for that it's like for kids also in 2000s it was very popular to wear a shirt that is very very small and sleek and cropped we also don't want that just choose something a bit more relaxed but still not too oversized if you don't want that and for women with slightly rounder figure you still can wear that you can just tuck it into your skirt or pants and have some kind of waist emphasis this way it's gonna lie down on your prominent chest and then it's gonna go back to your body and slightly shape it a little bit so it will be very beautiful and very feminine you can also add some chiffon or silk scarves on your neck here in the contrasted color if you want or with print that you like it's gonna make everything look very gentle and it will remove the severity of that short now everybody talks about jumper and i have a small addition i think it's important for a jumper to keep its shape first of all good quality neat is important because if it's very thin it looks extremely stretched it has loads of different folds on your body especially if you have bigger chest and fuller figure so that can create a lot of unwanted folds and then you're gonna look like a balloon so i would probably not choose something like that that could be extremely thin it would just hang on you i would probably choose something that is done a little bit more straight and more shaped like that especially for women with fuller chest again so the rule of thumb here is this the bigger the sweater is the thicker the knit should be otherwise we end up with this situation if the sweater is slightly smaller it's okay for it to be slightly thinner also i think it's better it's more universal for every body type if you have round a collar that is quite high on your neck because i think that if you're wearing a jumper and you normally wear it on something else if you're wearing it on a t-shirt and a shirt normally it's all gonna stick out it's gonna create that untidiness sometimes it can create that cool layered effect but in majority cases it creates untidiness so to make it a little bit more tidy and upgraded looking because of course you're wearing sweater when it's slightly chill outside right it can be 
autumn, spring or winter wardrobe. So this way it will close everything is underneath and it will look very uniform and you can even wear it as a top piece with your skirt. Otherwise you would have to wear it on your naked body, which is also an option if you want that. It should be neutral colors. Again, it's the best, it's the most classic thing. Again, the lighter it is, the more expensive it should look, the better quality should be the knit. So you can have something woolen or cashmere for colder time and then cotton sweater for summer. Beautiful thing, very comfortable. Cotton sweaters normally look very matte and expensive and very effortless. So that's one of the things. Now, everybody talks about t-shirt, of course black and white t-shirt that is not made with very thin cotton it's not very stretchy that is made with thick cotton that keeps its shape nothing too stretchy or thin nothing too hanging on you nothing extremely small nothing extremely big that universal good t-shirt there are some body types that they are not wearing that too often and it's normally women who are very soft i noticed that they just don't like it or they wear t-shirts that are kind of like a t-shirts but they are upgraded t-shirts with longer sleeves for example sleeves that finish somewhere at the elbow that can look like in between blouse top and t-shirt maybe something that is made with slightly different fabric slightly thicker fabric or with lace or coming back to your weight slightly in shape but t-shirts normally look great on everyone who is angular that casual style slightly sporty style normally looks cool in them so those are the people who normally go for t-shirts and they love it now jeans again mid-rise straight finishing at the bottom of the thinnest part of your angle or below neutral color dark blue normally is best black white jeans also can look amazing be careful not to choose too sleek white jeans it looks like leggings it just doesn't look elegant very often unless your legs are extremely extremely thin for the rest of me when i recommend whether go for even slightly wider leg especially from your hips but just don't go for wide hips area if you going for wider jeans just make sure that the butt sits very sleek here and then if you want some width it should start at the lower bone of your hip somewhere from here next one skirt skirts it's a separate subject i have a video skirts for the body types and where we discuss each and every body type whether you are small and angular or tall and angular or tall angular and flashy or just tall and flashy or flashy and small and all these kind of things because the skirt is one of those pieces that women are normally scared to get because they feel like they just don't look good in skirts and it's yes and no it's just more trials and errors. If you would order 20 skirts from the shop, you would try them on, preferably even videoing yourself several steps away from the camera. You put it out there, it's approximately like maybe your stomach level. You put your phone, you press video, and then just walk back and forth to the sides on that skirt with shoes that preferably would have slight heel, not very flat because probably won't be flattering looking in majority cases anyways, even if the skirt is for you. And then walk back and forth. Another good tip for checking your skirt is if you're placing your phone front camera, make sure you're not at the bottom of the shot. Phone cameras have this tendency to distort your body so you will look unrealistically elongated especially your legs if you are too low in the video so you have to be in the center of the camera you will see it normally your perfect skirt would be something below your knees something that would finish at the thinnest part of your legs below the knees it should not be extremely sleek so at the knees it would kind of tie your legs together we don't need that because first of all it's hard to walk and then second of all if you have slightly wider ankles and cuffs it's going to look very strange proportionately. So the skirt should probably be sitting well on your butt area. And then after that hip bone, the lower hip bone, it can go straight. So if it goes straight, it's going to finish under your knees and it's going to be slightly wider on the sides and it will look very harmonious. And your legs will look more delicate with that. One color skirt is more elegant looking than patterned skirt. But of course, many things depend on how you're creating the whole look. But if we talk about basic wardrobe, of course, I recommend you to have maybe black skirt, maybe denim skirt for every day would be nice. Sometimes they can have slits on the sides, at the front, at the back, can look amazing. 
so just play with it if you feel like you are very squarish and you have a lot of width in your body for you probably would be great if you have a slit on the side or a slight diagonal thing on your skirt any diagonal thing on your skirt will elongate your legs and will break any squarishness in your body if you don't like it now let's talk about dresses so of course basic dress should be simple looking you should be able to make it look very different with everything that you put on top so of course basic dress would be whether navy blue or black that's what i recommend now as far as dresses top and the bottom top is much easier to fit than the bottom women spend more time as i said with skirts so once you find your perfect skirt maybe you remember even that you used to have a skirt that looked great on you and just analyze it from that viewpoint what was the length what was the silhouette what was the fabric the color why you like to wear this skirt there's going to be a huge hint for you about the dress that you're going to wear so the dress which has similar bottom that your skirt is, is of course going to look amazing on you dress preferably should have thicker stripes it's much more universal more elegant and you will be able to dress it up and dress it down if it has extremely thin stripes here and very open chest area it looks more like for the beach or for a hot day in the city rather than for work or for an event or for some kind of occasion it should keep its shape it should be very good quality fabric preferably because otherwise if it's again stretched thin cotton it's hanging on you it's just not going to look elegant enough and it's not going to be a basic piece it's just you will be always struggling how you can upgrade the look so in my viewpoint if you have just these pieces in your wardrobe maybe in a couple of colors you have an amazing capsule and it doesn't matter what your body type is you already are good and then you can build your wardrobe from there thank you so much for watching i hope that was helpful you can ask me any questions in the comments and i will probably make a video about this or make a big q a video answering your questions thank you so much guys i'll see you soon Bye bye